everyone sit down immediately. We are not going to take off. <laughs> Which I, had, I mean, I just assumed that we weren't going to take off because the plane had stopped. And the flight attendant said, yes, everyone sit down. After <laughs> I was like, shut up, lady. I got this. <laughs> My name is Sarah Weiss, and I am the rector of Saga College and a professor of humanities, anthropology, and music together. I was one of those quiet children who likes to spend their summer kind of lying diagonally across the bed reading books. That's what I did in the summer. And then my mother would say, go out and mow the lawn or go out and run around the block. And I'd be like, yeah, I got to finish this book first. My dream job as uh, when I was like four or five was that I was going to be a doctor. Then I was going to be a professional musician. Uh, I was going to be a singer and I was going to do theater and then after that uh, reality hit <laughs> on both of those and I realized that what I was really interested in um, was cooking and so then I, <laughs> I thought I was going to be a professional cook. When I went to college I was drawn into doing research in psychology. I would spend hours um, behind a wall that was actually a mirror on the other side and so people didn't know that I was there looking and it got creepier and creepier. <laughs> I was like, oh, this person, oh, I don't want to see that, you know, don't do that now. I'm, you know, it was really, and then I thought if I'm, because I was interested in humans and human behavior and so I thought if I'm going to do humans, then I want them to know I'm looking at them rather than hiding behind a, you know, a wall that you can't see and so that, then I thought, oh, anthropology would be good. I popped the disc in and I started listening and I was like, Oh my God, what is this? And I, I must have listened to the same, rec like the whole album, um, maybe five times. And people were like, uh, other people need to use that CD. Hello? You know, come on, Weiss, get off the thing. And it was, it was Javanese Gamelan. And that was the only music that I've ever heard that is just like, oh, I have to play this stuff. I thought punk was really cool. And I thought that, um, what did I actually listen to? I mean, sort of disco had happened and I was like eh. My dad is also a musician and um, I valued the idea that I could go with my dad without anybody else in the family. We could go off to piano lessons together. So we did that. And so starting from when I was about five, maybe even younger, um, we would go off together on Saturday mornings and have piano lessons. And it was as much the music, I mean in fact the, the lessons, the piano lessons that I had with that particular teacher were not really lessons. It was more like she enjoyed talking to my dad and I happened to be there. Um, and, you know, so I would sit there and play something, but they'd be talking and so then I would noodle around and, you know, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't an ideal lesson in terms of lesson, but for me it was an ideal interaction because I got to hang out with my dad. It was a car ride and then we'd sometimes stop for snacks on the way home. And so it became a whole social thing. You know, you sort of walk around and you're like, oh, I'm sure that I have, you know, this is a girl. It's, I've got a girl inside me, you know, and, you know, or whatever. You just decide, you know, you think you know this person that's growing inside you and then I had my first ultrasound and I said oh my god she's a boy and <laughs> and I was like and and the, the the nurse was like you can't tell that there's no way this baby is I'm like no he is clearly a boy look it's not a girl it's a boy and I fell instantly in love with that little boy who was <laughs> Sam who ended up becoming Sam like when I leave the house in order to come back to the house, I have to kiss all the walls. Because then you know you know that the house will be safe and you know that you'll come back. So on the one hand, you can think, I'm leaving a part of myself and that's a good thing because then you know you have left a presence there and people feel that you're there and you feel that they've impacted on you and that's a, that's a really good thing. What I think I've been doing over the course of the last a six, five, five months since I told people that I was leaving is like building ways to stay here emotionally, like for a part of me to stay, but not to leave a hole. And so that involves inviting people to come to Austria and it involves genuinely making it clear to people that just because a person isn't present doesn't mean they're not there for you. That's the thing that makes it possible for me to keep moving around and to stay sane. Because if I'd left so many places and I'd left parts of me that were not filled up in some way or not recovered in some way, then I would f be sort of, there'd be holes. <laughs>